Guys, meet my huge ant colony. We on the channel call them the Blades of Midas. We've watched this massive ant colony grow from just a few hundred workers in a container with paper towel to now a few hundreds of thousands in a terrarium. These ants are actually a dream species of mine, and I've had several failed attempts in the past at getting a colony of these ants started. But as you can see here, the Blades of Midas are totally thriving. And I'm thrilled because the best part is these ants have created in their domain one of the coolest ant nests I've ever seen. Behold the Blades of Midas highly prized lair, a monster ant nest of epic proportions. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. Now I've tried to do an update live stream video of these ants, but sadly the picture came out a bit blurry. So I wanted to shoot the colony in 4K UHD like we usually do, just so you guys could truly appreciate how amazing these ants are. Now if you're new to ants, these truly unique ants are native to my area and are known as polyrachis ants, or spiny ants, due to the various spines that cover their body. They also have a sort of gold iridescence to them. The ants themselves are truly impressive. And as I take you on a tour through their territories in this video, you'll see exactly what I mean. I do also have an important question to ask you guys at the end of the video. So do stay tuned for all that coming up. So AC family, the first thing I wanted to show you is this. Remember what the Blades of Midas's terrarium used to look like? It was a lush, beautifully scaped garden, full of plant life, mosses, a white gravel pathway, and perfectly tended soils. We called the lands Polyraxia. But as gorgeous as Polyraxia was to us humans, it seemed the ants had other plans for it. AC Family this is what Polyraxia looks like today. What a difference! The ants have decided to completely clear the territories of its once abundant plant life. I actually had a suspicion they might do this. I'm not sure how they've managed to kill the plants, despite my attempts to keep them alive, but I believe the ants either picked away at the plants at root level, or snipped up the leaves and used the material to build their nest, which you guys will see now. The only plants that remain alive in Polyraxia are the several large nerve plants, that grow at the foot of their massive ball nest, surrounding their huge spiny ant palace. The plants have actually become an amazing and integral part of their nest. What's cool about these polyrachis ants, which to me is the most impressive part of keeping these ants, is their unique nesting behavior. These ants don't nest in soil, like most ants that build anthills and such, but rather build these massive structures above ground using debris they collect from their environment. Their construction truly blows my mind. Have a look at how impressive their monster debris nest they've built is. This is what it looks like from the front, but wait until I show you what the back of this nest looks like, guys. So as you can see, the ants have built their nest on one side of the driftwood, using fibers of moss collected from around their terrarium, as well as the various rice husk pieces that I incorporated into their substrate purposely in hopes that they would use it as a nesting material, which they did. All of this is bound together using silk produced by their larvae which is pretty mind-boggling if you think about it. The ants use webbing to cement their home building materials together. 
As mentioned, the ants have also chosen to simply expand and build around the living nerve plants, sparing them. I'm sure the plant benefits the ants somehow, but I'm unsure how. Perhaps helping to keep the internal nest environment humid and oxygenated? Like in weaver ants who build nests using the living leaves of trees. Now have a look at the crazy nest entrances they've built. Each entrance is heavily guarded. These ants are aggressive and are ready to give up their lives to bite and formic acid spray any intruder wanting to enter or stick a tongue into any of these nest holes. Ant eaters of the world, they're looking at you. It's actually amazing because the ant silk turns into a beige color, which camouflages perfectly with the driftwood. So it's hard to tell where the nest starts and where the wood begins. From far away, I'm sure this all just looks like an unsuspecting log with dried moss all over it. Parts of this nest actually remind me of a paper wasp nest. Don't you guys think? This here is the largest of the nest exits. Oh, how I wish I could stick a tiny camera probe into there and see what secrets lay within their nest. Inside the Blades of Midas' nest, we'd be able to find many queen ants. Because this colony is polygynous, meaning they have multiple queen ants living harmoniously together all laying eggs. We'd find brood, we'd find virgin reproductive males and queen ants with wings, and perhaps even stored food. Who knows? But I'm waiting for the camera technology to improve so I can properly shoot the inside of this spiny ant nest. Now AC family, if you think this side is impressive, have a look at the back. Just crazy, right? The ants have been really busy. I just love this giant mossy sloping hill they've created. How I'd love to toboggan or ski down it. Okay, this is the Canadian in me talking now. Now some of you may be wondering what the test tube is. That AC family is their sugar water test tube. The ants drink from it, and I always placed it in this location. And as you can see here, the ants have decided to incorporate the test tube into their nest. This is a smart move because it means they can drink from it within the protection of their nest without the need to leave home. I refill this sugar water test tube every few days and when I pull it out, it rips a bit of the nest. But I always stick the new sugar water test tube into the same spot and the ants simply reseal the opening around the test tube again with webbing. They also pull out some of the cotton fibers and use it to build. The ants actually love their sugar, but have another sugar water test tube here, which is almost done and needs to be refilled. I also provide the ants with a source of fresh water here. But sugar isn't the only thing ants need nutritionally. These ants love their meat. And AC family, it just so happens it's feeding time for the Blades of Midas. Let's feed them, shall we? Every day I offer these ants several cut up roaches, placing down here, and instantly the hungry ants pounce on them. it seems the roach was still capable of movement, so I went in with scissors to cut it up some more. Which helped. One of the coolest things I love doing is watching the ants swarm a newly found prey item and feast communally. The roaches I feed are all gut loaded with a ton of veggies, mostly leftover food from my pet birds, which include things like alfalfa sprouts, dark leafy greens, sprouted seeds, fruit and grains. By the way, please subscribe to my new bird and aviary channel here. But I find the secret to ant keeping is making sure the feeders eat highly nutrient dense food. The ants seem to be enjoying their huge roach beef now. All the protein from this roach will help the queens of the colony lay more eggs, help feed the growing larvae, and help the mature larvae produce more silk needed to glue their nest together. I find these ants when fed well, 
will launch these periodic nest expansion operations where the entire colony will focus most of their energy at building a new wing or section to their ever-growing nest. It's actually a pretty marvelous thing to witness. And so, that concludes the tour of Polyraxia and the Blades of Midas' new nest. What do you guys think of it? Now at the start of the video, I mentioned I'd be asking you an important question, and it's this. I've been trying to decide when we should relocate the Blades of Midas to a new terrarium. Technically, the colony still has room to expand their nest westward, toward the other end of the driftwood piece. But looking at the floor of the terrarium, it does seem like they are starting to get a bit crowded. If I were to move them to a new terrarium, it would surely be at least twice the size of this tank, and very intricately designed. Now that I know how these ants prefer to build nests, I would also make sure the decor I chose was very conducive to nest building with lots of natural lattice work for the ants to build off. I also have been thinking about how to move the ants into the next terrarium. I'm thinking it would just require me to put on some gloves and literally pick up this entire driftwood piece with the nest attached and dump the entire thing inside the new terrarium scooping up the plants along with them. I'm assuming there aren't underground tunnels below the surface, but we just have to see come moving day. In my mind, it would be a crazy operation, but I'm willing to do it if you guys think the ants are ready to move into a larger space. So do let me know. Keeping these spiny ants has truly been an amazing experience. And as I've said many times before, is a dream come true for me. I can't count how many times I've dreamed of seeing with my own eyes these polyrachis ants construct their signature and iconic debris nests, just like the one they've constructed here. It's true beauty within four panes of glass. And I'm honored to be able to just sit back and look at them doing their thing every day, whenever I wanted, and needed to watch something totally relaxing. They say watching an aquarium lowers blood pressure. I truly feel like watching ants has a similar benefit. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you would just like to watch some extended play footage of the ants just doing their thing. Come watch the Blades of Midas with me and relax. And before I go, I just wanted to remind you all that if you would like to try keeping ants with me, be sure to visit AntsCanada.com for all of your ant keeping needs. We offer easy to use ant farm starter kits and also host a section on the site where you can get complete ant colonies in your area with a queen, so you too can attempt keeping your dream ant colony. I'll be sure to keep you guys updated on the progress of the Blades of Midas here. And if we do decide to move them into a new terrarium now, their next video should be uploading quite soon. Until the next time we revisit the epic kingdom of our beloved Blades of Midas, thank you all for watching and supporting the ants. It's ant love forever.